All righty. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining us for our afternoon Design Innovation Month webcast. Uh, thank you so much for your patience while we got the audio issues squared away. We really appreciate that. My name is Chris Dubuque, one of the application engineers located far out west in our Portland, Oregon office. I'm going to be helping out today's presenter, who is Bob McGoy. He's going to go through a very, very interesting and cool presentation. Uh, before we turn everything over to Bob, I'll just mention, we're kind of talking about it, that our webcasts are always recorded and they will be uploaded to the CATI YouTube channel, and I'll send that link out here momentarily. Uh, please give us a couple of days to get that video processed and uploaded. Everyone's audio is muted because of that. Please keep yourselves muted. We want to try to get the cleanest possible audio captured in this recording. Uh, if you have any WebEx issues, I'm listed as CATI, so please contact me in the chat. And I think with all of that said and done, I will uh, pass the presentation over to Bob. Take it away, Bob. Thank you very much, Chris. Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, once again, my name is Bob McGoy. Um, I'm actually out of the Chicago office. Um, been working with computer aided technology for about 18 years. So I spent a lot of time configuring Windows, been configuring systems. Over the last few years, I've been working with a coworker of mine named Brian Pollock, and we've been doing lots of benchmarking and hardware testing. So that's where a lot of this information came out of. Um, the goal was to try to squeeze as much out of your hardware, your software as possible to allow SOLIDWORKS to perform at its maximum level. And when we go through and get our machines ready to actually start benchmarking, these are a lot of things that we go through in Windows to try to squeeze as much performance out of Windows itself before we get SOLIDWORKS on the machine. So. Um, this may only be a half hour, 45 minutes. If there's questions, uh, feel free to ask, and we'll go ahead and just hop right into my list of things that I tweak when I'm building a Windows machine. So the first thing I try to do is, if I've been running a machine for a while, I will try to control the number of applications that actually activate on startup of the system. Sometimes there's things you really don't need all the time inside of Windows. Um, sometimes I'm running virtual machines. Sometimes I'm running Google. Sometimes I'm running Microsoft OneDrive. So if you're in before Windows 10, maybe you're on Windows 7 or Windows 8 still, you would activate this by going to Start, your Start menu, going to Run, and type in MFconfig and hitting Enter. It would bring up this system configuration area. And you would go into Startup the startup tab, and you start unchecking the things that were not things that you'd want to run when you start your computer. Same way in Windows 10 here, you can do it from the task manager. You can see the list of every um, application that runs on your machine, and you see the status. And you can right click and disable those so they don't run when you start the computer. These are your startup settings. Now, there's another way to get to those in Windows 10, which is actually under the settings menu. Um, I noticed a few years back, Windows kind of took a shift from having a control panel, and now they have settings to make it easier for the user. You still have control panel, but you can also get to it by going into settings and type in startup apps in the Windows start menu it will bring this up and it will show you all the applications that start when I'm running. Here, my system is also my license manager for my PDM, so I've got the Flexera um, installer there for my SNL, so I'm going to leave that. Another thing that we like to do is try to free up as much hard drive space as possible. You can do that by going into Windows Explorer, you can right mouse button click on your C drive. You can say, go to the properties of that, that, that drive, and you can actually clean up the drive. It will go in and will automate clearing out your recycle bin and a few other tools just to make your life a lot easier. So it brings up the 
uh, Windows disk cleanup tool and shows you all the possible downloads, be it downloads, your control panel, your temporary internet files, you go through and say, what do you want to clean out? Mine's been cleaned out here, um, but you can see it indicates that by doing this cleanup, I can save over two gig of hard drive space on my primary drive, which makes my life a little bit easier. Another one here is probably one of my favorites. We've had, we've been messing with this one for years. If you notice, this is found under system, under advanced system settings, under advanced tab and performance settings. So let's, let's take a look at that real quick. So you should still see my desktop here. I'm gonna get to this by going to my, my search and I'm gonna type in the word system and sometimes it does it, sometimes it does not. There we go. Go to system under control panel. This is something that we all know and love. If we go to advanced system settings, you'll see here, this is very much the same window we're about to come to. We've got performance here. So I'm gonna go to settings and you can see Right off the bat, it says, let Windows choose what is best for my computer. Not sure the last time I actually trusted Microsoft to do what was best for me. So here, I'm gonna say, well, let's see what happens if I say make it look the best possible. Oh, it turned on two settings. If I say adjust for best performance, oh, look at that. It turned off all the extra visual effects in Windows. So. You can see there, if you're really looking for pure performance and just set it on your system, you might want to go into this setting. Um, where this helps out is your video card. Um, Windows um, visual effects, those are compounded on what we call GIDs, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, bit can cause some errors, which we'll see here in a little bit. So that's where you go and get that. Another thing that you can do, and this is primarily for machines that have what I consider to be a long lifespan, you might want to go in and use a tool like Registry Cleaner um, to clean a dirty registry up because many times we install programs, we uninstall programs, and there's a lot of stuff that gets left behind. Um, what I consider to be orphaned links, orphaned registry um, locations and DLL locations. And if Windows is trying to find those, it's, it's erroring or it's taking longer to compile when it first loads up, we might want to have this cleaned up a little bit. So that's number four on my list. Number five, I can't harp on this a month, um, a, um, enough. Um, a lot of us are going to laptops and laptops can um, be a bane when it comes to power, well, the manufacturers of those systems, when they configure them, they want to let you know that that machine will last longer than the previous one. And many times it does, but with the detriment to performance. So let's take a look at power management settings inside of Windows here. So I'm gonna minimize my presentation again. And you notice I'm on a laptop because I actually have a battery down here in the bottom right hand corner. I'm gonna go to power options just by right clicking on that battery. Here, you can see I've got balance set up. I'm gonna to go to change the plan settings. And you can see here, I never use just the battery. I'm always plugged into my machine. This is probably a bad idea for the battery life, but I don't care. <coughs> I always need the maximum power output. So things to take in consideration here is how long does it take for the the screen to actually turn off the display. I would say never when I'm plugged in, and how long do I want it to be when it sleeps? I also said never. These aren't the big thing I'm worried about. What I'm worried about here is when I go to change advanced power settings. So this is gonna impact quite a few things about my system. So I'm gonna come down here, and we're gonna look at process power management. When we do that, you can see what is the minimum processor state of the system. So what is the clock speed of my system gonna be? 
right now, by default, if it's not plugged in, it throttles back the minimum processor speed to 5% of the actual processor speed to conserve battery life, which isn't too bad. But when I look at my maximum, I believe this defaults for when it's on battery, I believe to like 60% or something much lower than that. So this is something you wanna take in consideration. If I'm on battery, what's happening to my system performance? So also, if you are going to be running 100%, you might want to go to active cooling on your machine. So those are things you want to take in consideration. So we get that in power management. Okay. Many times when we buy a laptop, it comes with NVIDIA or um, an AMD professional grade chipset. And um, it also comes with the Intel integrated chipset on the motherboard itself. Well, they use a tool from NVIDIA called Optimus to figure out when to switch between one video card and the other, okay? Some manufacturers will call this switchable graphics. Some people call this dynamic graphics, depending on what it says in the BIOS. Um, if you've never been in the BIOS of your laptop or your workstation, please try that. Um, each manufacturer does it a little differently. Sometimes it's F2 when you start the machine, sometimes it's F8, sometimes it's delete. But you're looking for the graphic settings inside your BIOS. I wish I could show you the BIOS, but I can't run WebEx while in a BIOS. So we'll just give you a screenshot of off of my phone here. So the thing that we want to do is we want to disable the Intel graphics chipset by saying I want to go to either discrete or fixed graphics depending on the manufacturer. What that does is the Intel graphics chipset does not show up in your system any longer. It doesn't even consider it to be a piece of hardware. One telltale sign is if you're sitting on your desktop and you right mouse button click, which for some reason my right mouse button click is taking forever to do. Um, hello, Bueller. Um, it should, if you have switchable graphics, it will show an Intel settings. We don't want that on there. Um, where this comes into play is sometimes that will cause instability inside a solar and sometimes it doesn't do a good job to switch between the Intel chipset and the NVIDIA or the AMD chipset, especially if we're toggling through different programs. Say I'm working on draft site, then I need to go to SolidWorks. It will try to go from the Intel chipset to the, A, uh, the NVIDIA chipset. It might cause some instability or get locked in one or the other. So disabling graphics card switching is a very good one to help performance of your laptop. This one bit me in the butt when the first um, creative session came out for Windows 10. Um, I was in the middle of doing a very large benchmark on a 300,000 component assembly, and all of a sudden, Windows just tanked completely. It wasn't just SOLIDWORKS, it was everything. And what was happening was um, Microsoft was pulling down five or six gigabytes behind the scene while I was processing a very large assembly. Um, so one of the things you can do is you can change the active time hours for Windows updates to happen. So here, I'm coming in and you can see the active hours currently are 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Well, flip that. Make the start time 5 p.m. and make the end time 8 a.m. That way, you're not allowing Windows to download Windows updates while you're working. So last thing you want to do is have a bunch of data being written to your drive when you're trying to write data or read data from that drive. Here's another one. Um, I actually found this one out the other day. Um, Windows will try to do automatic maintenance to your system without you knowing behind the scenes. It's trying to um, update softwares, uh, do security scans, do diagnostics. It's doing a bunch of things for you behind the scenes. Now, what I've done here is I've turned on 
when do I want it to happen? It defaults actually to 8 a.m. in the morning, I believe, on some systems. If you go in here, you can say, when do I want it to happen? And if my machine fell asleep, in this situation, it's going to wake up the system at 2 a.m., run the maintenance in Windows, and then let it go back to sleep. So that way it's not operating during peak hours, okay? So that's, that's another nice little tool there. You can find that in the control panel under systems and maintenance. Um, if you scroll down, you'll find automatic maintenance. So let's, let's see if we can find that here. Control panel. We're gonna go to security and maintenance. And you can see there's security. So it's talking about your firewall and all that good stuff. Under maintenance, you can see right here, automatic maintenance. So right now, I've got it scheduled to happen at 2 a.m. And it will happen automatically even if my laptop is asleep. So that's, that's a nice one to know about. Sometimes we have scenarios where life just kicks us in the butt on our machine and we have to start over from scratch. That used to be a very daunting task and somewhat scary. So the question is, how do we do this? It's actually gotten a heck of a lot easier. Um, I was talking to our IT guys and they showed me this and I thought this was one of the greatest things in sliced bread. If you ever worked on computers yourself, you know that wiping out the hard drive, grabbing an instance of Windows and reinstalling that instance of Windows can be a nightmare because sometimes you have to wait for drivers to reinstall and a bunch of other stuff. Here with Windows 10, it's gotten a lot easier. So what you do, and I'll show this to you, is you go to your start menu and you say, reset this PC. When I click on reset this PC, it brings up, um, it says reset this PC. Um, if your PC isn't running well, you might like, this might help. And when you go through and get started, it's gonna come up and say, hey, would you like to keep your files? It will remove all the apps and keep your personal data. You can also say, wipe out everything and start Windows over from scratch. It'll install a brand new instance of Windows and will act like you had never run this machine before. Now, I was kind of concerned about this myself when it comes to, wait a second, I have multiple drives in my machine, my data drives on a secondary drive that has nothing to do with Windows. So if I come in here and I say remove everything, it will come up and say, hey, um, do I want to remove data from all drives? So it will come up and ask you, do you want to just touch the Windows drive only, wipe it clean, and leave the other drives alone? Perfect, that's what I'd like for you to do. I've got all my data on the secondary drive. So, and honestly, that takes 10, 15 minutes, and you're done. It's ready, it asks you immediately, um, what region are you in, what keyboard, it treats it like it's a brand new install of Windows. The other nice thing is you don't have to reinstall your Windows key because it still sees a unique identifier for that. You can see right there, a couple screenshots. And it's just telling me there that I had recently upgraded to Windows 10. That was an old screenshot there. And just to let you know, it's really not that scary to reset your machine. Just make sure you got your data backed up about 10, 15 minutes and you're good. And I was thinking to myself, what's the sc least scariest thing I can think of? It was this. So that's my kid. So number 10, check for malware. We've all heard of the WannaCry virus. Um, that was a pretty nasty malware that came out a few years ago. Um, oh, that was a great question that just popped up. Will that, will resetting my machine force me to reinstall SolidWorks? Yes, it will force you to reinstall SolidWorks. You have to reinstall everything. 
um, it's a bare bones install of windows. Um, I actually do this once a year. I like having a fully clean machine. Um, another thing that you can do if you do not want to, if you don't want to do the scary thing, another thing that you can do instead of resetting the machine would be have IT create you a clean user profile and delete your old user profile. What that will do is you get a whole new set of registry keys for your login user, and that sometimes is a significant performance boost as well if you don't want to do the scary thing. So that's a very good question, yes. The, the nice thing is um, when you do your reactivation, it will see your machine as the same machine because it's using the same unique identifier and you won't have to have support um, deactivate your license, which is nice. So going back to checking for malware, I mentioned WannaCry, that, that thing that just took everything down. Sometimes we don't know that we have malware on machines, though. We don't have something that pops up and says, hey, send me $500 and I'll unlock your computer. Many times, malware are doing nefarious things like populating the virus throughout the rest of the company, or it's populating just simple calculations and sending them to a location. Maybe it's using your machine as a, um, oh, what's that, BitTorrent um, farmer. So farming uh, prime numbers off using your machine in the background. One way or the other, it's a great idea just to use a tool where like um, CC Cleaner, Malware Bytes, Hijack This, Adaware, to just check the system over and make sure you've got nothing nefarious on the machine that could actually cause system performance problems. This one's one of my favorites and I really wish I would have known about this maybe 10, 15 years ago. I, I figured this out about nine, 10 years ago. Um, was working with some of the development guys at SOLIDWORKS and um, we kind of figured this one out. This was kind of interesting. Um, all of a sudden you're working and SOLIDWORKS is doing something, but SOLIDWORKS whites out. It, it goes milky white. And you think to yourself, why did it do this? Okay. The reason for this is there is a registry key in Windows called Hang App Timeout. It is hard coded into Windows by default. Before Windows 7, what this, this registry key did was it said, any program in Windows that you're running, if it doesn't return a call back to Windows and says I'm doing something within about three minutes, Windows would assume, hey, there's something wrong with this program, it's a memory leak, something's wrong with it, I'm gonna go ahead and ask you, do you want me to wait or do you want me to kill the process? And if you, if you stall out, I'm gonna go ahead and kill it for you. Like I said, that amount of time used to be three minutes. Microsoft, in their infinite wisdom, decided that every program inside of the Windows environment should run as fast as Excel. No, it, not everything runs as fast as Excel. We know that. But what they did was they took that time and reduced it from three minutes to five seconds. So if a program does not return a call back to Windows within five seconds, it makes the program cold go milky white, which is not a good thing. So, um, because SOLIDWORKS is actually doing something, and you can just let it set, but if you keep clicking on that, that milky white user interface, Windows will finally say, enough's enough, I'm gonna kill it myself, and Windows will crash SOLIDWORKS out. Um, it is not SOLIDWORKS crashing, Windows is actually taking the program down for you, which you don't want it to happen. So, what you do is you're gonna create a registry key, okay? So how do we do this? Let's go, go back and look. So this is H key current user, this is per user, it's under control panel and desktop. So let's go look at regedit here. 
to bring up regedit and we're going to go to so that was HT current user we're going to go to control panel and desktop As you can see, right now on this system, I do not have hung app timeout. So it's not there by default because it's hard coded and we don't see it. It's not a, a notable one. So we're going to create that key. So by the calculations here, it's 5,000 milliseconds by default. So we're going to increase that to 180,000 milliseconds equaling three minutes. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to create a string value. And it's going to be hung app timeout. I'm going to double click here. And the value is going to be 180,000. So now, when my programs stall out, um, it will not turn milky white and say not responding. Okay, so that's what hap That's why that's happening. Windows is doing that. Some of us have seen this pop up in the lower right-hand corner of Windows. It says available resources are critically low. Solvers cannot open any more windows. You may have also seen this one as well. Some of the applications mean you close to free up resources. Um, you may even see the resource monitor in the lower right hand corner of Windows pop up say you're running low on resources. There are two things that you want to look for right off the bat. One is increasing your page file. Okay. So let's show how we go ahead and do that. I believe I still have my, my system properties up here. So this you get from going to advanced settings under system. So we go to advanced and we are going to change performance. Under performance, next to visual effects, we're gonna to go to advanced. Right now it says my virtual memory is a total of five gigabytes. And the reason for that is because this is a brand new instance of Windows I've started in the last few days. It's automatically allowing Windows to manage my paging file, which I'm not a humongous fan of. So what I do is I go in and go to automatic and uncheck that and say custom. You want this number, which is in megabytes, to be equal to the amount of RAM you have in your system or two times the amount of RAM. That's kind of the number. Um, I have 32 gig of RAM on this, on this laptop, so I'm putting 32 gig in there. I set the initial and the maximum to the same amount. What that does is it tries to take 32 gigs of free open hard drive space together on your hard drive so it doesn't fragment it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit set on that. This will not take effect until after I restart my computer, but that's okay. I'll restart that later. So the next thing here, we may still have it come up. Um, it still may say that we're low on system resources. And you think to yourself, I have enough RAM. I have a good video card. I got plenty of hard drive space. What the heck is going on with my system that SOLIDWORKS Resource Monitor is still saying you're running low on resources, okay? Well, the problem is something called GIDs. So that's G as in George, D as in David, E as, I mean I as in India, okay? And these are IDs internal to your login to Windows and it's about how many objects can be visually written onto your Windows session, okay? So here, um, 
what you can do is you can go into your system under HK Local Machine, Software, Microsoft, Windows, current version of Windows, and you'll find a key called GID Process Handle Quota and User Process Handle Quotas. These start out as 10,000 GIDs. I strongly recommend tripling that number. Um, SolidWorks would love to hard code this into their installer, but they can't mess with Windows default keys. They just can't. It's part of their agreement with, with, with Microsoft. So if you have that coming up, change these keys, and it will eliminate that, that low system resources, especially after you've already re you've set your paging file to be something higher than it was. This is usually the culprit, okay? If you are wondering, how can I learn more about GIDs and um, how they impact SOLIDWORKS? Um, if we look on mysolidworks.com, I don't believe I am logged in at the moment here. Let's see if I am. I'm not logged in. So if I'm logged in, it gives me access to the knowledge base. So you can either do this through my SOLIDWORKS or your, your SOLIDWORKS customer portal, but the, the reference number that you want to look at is S-048683. This gives an amazing rundown of what GIDs do for your system and why they're important. It also gives two uh, links to Microsoft Tech articles which will give you more than enough information on GIDs to make your case to IT, and probably enough information to make your IT person's head spin. So write that one down. This will be in the recording as well, but you can get that either on the SOLIDWORKS customer portal or you can sit, um, go into mysolidworks.com and get that as well. This one I thought was kind of interesting as well. Um, I've been using per Perfmom, they call it performance monitor for several years, but I always had to download my own. They baked it into Windows 10, which is kind of nice. Um, so what this allows you to do is it will monitor system problems and will report back to you what's going on with your system. It'll show you if certain things aren't set correctly and will show percentages of problems. So this is how you run a report through process monitor. If we go down to the start menu and we type in perfmon, so P-E-R-F-M-O-N space slash report, it will bring up the resource performance and monitoring system. It will go through, take a few moments, and we'll see hardware-wise, software-wise, registry-wise, if there's anything in the system that is a blatant problem. It'll even show, hey, you don't have enough um, memory for event logs. It'll even come back and tell you you need to get more, um, reallocate more memory for event logs and that sort of thing, which is kind of nice. So this is just what the report looks like here. Um, strongly recommend that you run through these maybe once every six months. You can see right here, it's talking about my event logs. Maybe need to up, update the buffer. Um, you can actually look at that. But it also goes through your IOs. Your, it does a disk check. It goes through your security, your hardware devices to make sure things are up to date on drivers. And it's a nice little tool. So I highly recommend looking at that one. So when the creative update happened for Windows 10, many of us were experiencing something kind of odd. We'd have SOLIDWORKS open, we'd have Excel open, we'd have Chrome open, and we'd shut down the system, and then it would be completely shut down. We'd power back up, and everything that we had running would reopen. Chrome would reopen, Excel would reopen, SOLIDWORKS would reopen. And what was happening was Microsoft was recording all the apps that you were running and then being nice and saying, hey, let's go ahead and reopen those for you because that's what you're doing when you left the system. 
So this is tied to Cortana. If you are not using Cortana, this option does not exist for you. It's even grayed out. So you can see on screen here, this is a screenshot of this PC that we're running on, and you can see it's grayed out. But if I had Cortana running, it would allow me to say, I don't want Windows to actually reopen all my, my profiles. I want it to have a clean boot of Windows every time. So this you would find when you go to settings inside of Windows 10 here, and I believe it's privacy. Privacy settings. Under privacy settings, you come down to where is it? Yeah, I think I've got it listed here. Oh, sign in options. See if I can find it by going to my login, sign in, if I can spell correctly. There we go, sign in options. You come down to the bottom here under privacy and under sign in options, you can see mine's grayed out because I'm not using Cortana right now. But if I was, you could simply come in here and disable that and you don't have to worry about Windows reloading all your applications when you restart Windows. Another one here is turning off the ability for applications, aka programs, to do stuff in the background for you. So those annoying things like all of a sudden Windows Chrome pops up and says, hey, Facebook says today is such and such birthday. I, I didn't have Chrome open. Why is it doing that? Well, Chrome was open in the background, and Facebook sent in a notification saying somebody's birthday was today and sent you that notification in front of you right inside of Windows. Let's not let it be that intrusive. So what you can do is come in here and say, let the apps run in the background, turn that off. So you don't have things processing. This is an additional thing that they added in Windows 10. You can turn that off. Okay, one hardware thing. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because this was a kind of a gotcha from the hardware testing we did this last year, okay? So upgrading your hard drive is a great thing. Most of us are, in the, in the past five years, we've gone to solid state hard drives, but there still are some machines out there that are running spinner drives. And you can see, usually write and read speeds are around 100 megabytes per second. Well, if we go to the solid state drives, which lots of machines have those nowadays, they're almost, they're almost freebies, they're almost giveaways, you can see we're at 550 to about 520 read write speeds in megabytes per second. And then they came out with NVMe drives. Um, they're a type of solid state drive. They plug into an NVMe slot on the motherboard. It looks like a RAM chip. But you can see here, the read and write speeds are far superior to an SSD drive. So you can see 300, I mean 550 versus 3,020, I mean 3,278 megabytes for reading speeds. So the question is, do I need an M.2 drive? No, you actually don't. Um, myself and Brian Pollock, we did about three or four hundred tests, and we looked at the numbers, and there was no substantial difference between running a solid state drive and an NVMe drive inside of SOLIDWORKS. If anything, sometimes it performs slightly slower, depending on what was going on. And we went to the guys at SOLIDWORKS who do the hardware testing. So if you've ever gone to system requirements inside of the SOLIDWORKS website, you will see the pull downs and you see what video card driver that you use. We went to those guys, the guys that actually do the testing, and we show them this data and they're like, really? 
They went back and did the test themselves, same test that we did, and they verified that there's no substantial difference inside of SOLIDWORKS for SSD versus NVMe. With that being said, system performance is much higher with the NVMe drive. Writing and reading files, copying data from one place to another is much, much faster with the NVMe drives. If you're specking out a machine and someone puts an SSD drive in for your primary Windows drive, smack them on the back of the hand. Get a hold of one of these NVMe drives and, and make sure it's um, one of the Evo drives, the faster of those, and you'll be very happy. Um, this system, when I first started out the system that we're running on right now for today, my standard Windows would boot in about 30 seconds. I upgraded to an NVMe drive, just copying the partition over, and I went from 30 seconds to 14 seconds on a boot, just booting cold from Windows, and being able to log in within 14 seconds. So the performance is there overall for the system. Highly recommend it. For SolidWorks, it really doesn't help much. But if we have a healthier system, everything else inside of SolidWorks is gonna become more stable and faster. So 